Good morning! This week is a busy one in the garage and driver. We have all my cars home and we have a Lexus LC500 convertible to spend a week living with. Z06 and R8 get to be in the garage. The Shelby's out there and check this out. The Japanese luxury coupe convertible. So let's hope the weather stays nice this week and we can take the top down and enjoy it. 5 liter naturally aspirated V8. Gorgeous styling. Excited to spend a week with the LC500. Door handles pop out. Ooh, look at that. Carbon fiber door sills. Red seats. Nice. Cold start. That sounds pretty good. It's only 58 degrees out, but let's drop the top. It's sunny, right? Let's see what it's like. Open this up. You got some hidden buttons. And the whole mechanical dance of a folding soft top. The status is played here in the middle. And now we have a convertible. Listen to the sound of this naturally aspirated V8. That downshift is great, wow. Convertible top is down, the sun is shining, it is fantastic. What are you doing? Putting my hair up. Are you putting it on the top of your head like a unicorn? <laughs> yeah. Or like a walrus? Uh, or no, it's narwhal? Called, it's called a fucking Don't <laughs> mess up. What are you so amazed by? It reclines, yes. It goes out too! What do you mean? It goes, it goes, not only do I go back, but I go forward. So it's like I'm really going to back. Yes, it actually is. It is currently 6.53 p.m. and Grandmother Alexandra needs my, to go to bed. My aura ring said it. Bedtime is approaching. Your aura ring needs to be recalibrated. <laughs> no, so I'm trying to find directions to Oberweiss and the first suggestion is <laughs> Obama, obviously, or the OBGYN, which that also is not something I need. Oh, this, I do not like the Lexus touchpad. Come on. See, I keep skipping over the eat. OB, obesity. Yeah, that's what happens when I have too much ice <laughs> that's cream. That's what I was going to say. That's what we're going to have. Oberon. There we go. This is why CarPlay is just easier. This is one downside of the Lexus LC500. The trunk is pretty small. And for something that's a luxury GT car, it should have a bigger trunk. So there's two pairs of shoes in this box here. A pair of Costco slides in this one. And then my backpack. And that's pretty much it. It's a very, very shallow trunk. It's just not that spacious. So if you're going on a long road trip, I don't think that would fit a carry-on bag. Now, I don't remember how big the coupe trunk is exactly. I remember it being small and being a complaint when I drove a coupe, but the top, I wanted the convertible top, also impacts some of that, but that is pretty small trunk. <laughs> at idle nothing too obnoxious for a luxury coupe but man when you put it in sport sport plus thing sounds awesome and you see the tack red line is very low because the engine is cold it gradually goes up as it warms up weather is finally amazing today finished up work and we we're heading downtown chicago to get dinner because my youngest brother is in town so we're gonna take the lc 500 i already like this car enough that i'm like trying to find reasons to drive it long distances. So we're heading downtown Chicago. There will likely be some traffic, so we'll see what it's like. This thing is honestly really liking it. Engine sounds great, it looks great, it's comfortable. Tech is all right, we'll get more into that. And the top down when the weather is nice has been enjoyable. Traffic has sucked, but we're in the express lane, so it is a little bit better approaching downtown Chicago. <laughs> this is a nice place to be. I haven't actually been using any of the driver assistance systems. Not the most advanced. It looks like we have adaptive cruise control and does have a lane keep assist, but nothing like some of the newer generation cars. This platform did come out a couple years ago. I'm also just in normal drive mode. You toggle that right there. A lot of things on this are similar to LFA. LFA also has these two little kind of antenna toggle knob things. And also look at the center cluster. In two miles, take the I-90 East, I-94 East exit toward Dan Ryan Express. Good. <laughs> really 
important things right now. Wynn is trying to get Jonas Brothers pre-tickets. Is it working? I got in. You did? Oh, wow. I don't care about Jonas Brothers. I just like the Lexus LC500. Ooh, Jonas Brothers! Priorities. How much, Win? These ones are $200 and they're not even that, like, nice. Do that's it. Cool. You said you've been wanting to go since you were a child. I know. Do it. But not for $200. Do it. You don't have a wedding to pay for anymore. Yeah, but we're, we have a house to pay for. So All right, we are full of happy... Wait, what are you doing? Where's the cup holder? It's right there. That one's There's a only one? Um, that's actually a valid question. There is one up there and that is a square, so... What about can... in here? No, this is the center storage thing. Oh. And then this... Well, I guess only one person is allowed to drink at a time in this yes. car. Great Vietnamese food and time to head back. And we are going to drive back in style with the hood down. The hood down. And the we hood are... down. The hood. I don't know what it's called. Roof. The <laughs> roof down. And we're going to be rocking out to some Jonas Brothers. No. Yes. No. Okay, yes. fine. Now that I've been sufficiently terrified by Jonas Brothers, and the top is back on, with also the LC500 convertible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. It is very nice. It could have been the Jonas Brothers, but aside from that, you know, it is pretty nice. Oh, you know, Jonas Brothers didn't help the experience. This thing is just awesome. All right, bye, Wayne. Bye. Until next time. Until next time. We are down to about half a tank, 158 miles to empty, and have a trip to Michigan tomorrow, so, of course, Costco, fill up gas. That just took 10.8 gallons, so I'm guessing this is a 21 or 22 gallon tank, and now we are showing 340 miles of range. Tomorrow, driving to Michigan will be a lot of time on the freeway in 10th gear, so theoretically, we'll see what kind of highway fuel economy we can get in the LC500. It does have a 5 liter naturally aspirated V10, or V10, no, that's the LFA. It's a 5 liter naturally aspirated V8, which means that's not the most efficient one. There is a hybrid version, but if you're getting something like this, please, please, please get the NAVA because it is fantastic sounding. Alrighty, radar detector set up, everything packed into the trunk. Road trip time, Michigan. You mean the boot? The, the yeah, it's a truck. Uh, this thing does not have that much storage, so the back seats are not for people, they're for bags, and the trunk is full. Yeah, you're They're just actually like little mini seats. Yeah, it's for people Can without- Can you fit a human there? Without legs, maybe. Uh, you can't. No, no. So yeah, that's like just my little duffel bag. The trunk is not that big. Andrew just complaining about how small it is. But we have to go. I'm hoping fuel economy increases because it's a 322 mile drive and I have 324 miles on a full tank, but that's all been city driving. So theoretically on the freeway in 10th gear, that should improve. And with that, let's go. Good morning. We have made it out to Michigan and we're heading out to drive something else that has no roof or windshield today. It's gonna be a bit more extreme than the Lexus LC500 actually. My biggest complaint with the trunk of this thing is it's just tiny, right? That's a helmet, camera bag, and like you only have half your trunk left and it's not very deep. LC500, I just drove the BAC Mono and that thing was ridiculous, but that's a separate video. Back to the LC500, it's raining, but I am really liking this thing. It's a little bit chillier tonight, so let's go ahead and go to climate. Go to seats and steering. Let's turn our heated seat. Oh my gosh. This 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 little trackpad mouse pad thing is a little bit annoying sometimes. There we go. Heated steering wheel all the way. And then actually, convertible top. I can have hot air blowing out of this like vent right by the headrest. It's pretty awesome. With the top down, a little chillier, 60, 63 degrees drive home let's take a look at the styling of this lc 500 it is just gorgeous the proportions the curves the styling all of it up front we have the big lexus spindle grille which i think matches everything on this car so well the way it flows into the body lines the proportions i think it's executed very well on this vehicle here the lights too that very distinctive signature kind of boomerang shape lexus drl and even the headlights have these little details. Look inside the actual lens there. It looks so cool. Some elements of it seem to be LFA inspired across the rest of the lineup. It's good when you have the flagship like this leading the way. And then coming around to the side here, we do have the upgraded 21 inch forged wheels. 
This paint's pretty cool too, a metallic gray. Usually don't love silvers and grays, but it looks classy in this color with the red interior. And then we have the black folding soft top here. I believe there's also like a tan beige color one available, depending on your spec. The door handles, they sit flush, and then you can touch that and they pop out. And they have a little Lexus logo there. That's how they operate the doors. And then coming around back, Soft top folds down in there. LC500 badge right in the middle. Tail lights have this silver surround. The proportions and curves are just, they just look so good. We actually have real exhaust tips down in there too within those surrounds. Just look at this thing. It's beautiful. I'm gonna put the top down and show you guys that from outside. So the LC500 is a very nice car, but it's also a relatively limited use vehicle in that it's a luxury GT, it's a two-door, it's not super practical. It is a bit of a sports car, but it's not super hardcore, but I like it a lot. It has a lot of appeal. <laughs> that V8. So some of the basics, the LC500 comes with a five liter naturally aspirated V8, which is glorious. It's not the most powerful engine in a vehicle of this price point, 471 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque, but it's plenty and it sounds great. It has a 10-speed automatic transmission, which to be honest, is not my favorite. There's been a couple times where I've caught the transmission almost unawares when slowing down and accelerating again. It has a couple maybe rough shifts, so it's not perfect, but when you do put it into, if I toggle into Sport or Sport Plus, and go into manual, we do have these fixed paddle shifters or metal on the steering wheel. Gives me some pretty punchy downshifts. To me, in my mind, some of the competitors include things like a Mercedes SL, maybe a Jag F-Type. It's like a Japanese Aston Martin. It's beautiful, the styling is so nice. The curves, the proportions, even in soft top convertible form, I think it's a very, very good looking vehicle on these 21 inch wheels. Ooh, those downshifts are good. But I, I love the styling. Ever since this first came out, I was like, wow, the LC500 is gorgeous. Now there's no F version. I wish they had done an LCF. And I remember hearing rumors and seeing camo test cars and people saying, maybe there's a LCF coming. That would be really awesome. Imagine maybe a twin turbo V8, a bit more aggressive of suspension, a bit louder of an exhaust. It could be pretty awesome. But for a heavier, luxury GT car, thing hustles. And it handles its weight pretty well. We're also in a convertible, so I think it's only fair to put the top down. So you flip up this little center cover thing, and I have to be doing under 31 miles an hour. Just beeped at me, here we go. Nobody's behind me. The top will drop in, I believe, 15 seconds and goes up in 16 seconds at speeds up to 31 miles an hour. Watch the little mechanical dance there. And just like that, we have a convertible. We'll put the windows back up for a bit of isolation. With the top down, even with the windows down, it's pretty well isolated in here. I know they did some things to trickery with airflow to ensure the cabin doesn't get way too turbulent. But with the windows up, the little deflector there, there's two of them. There's actually the mesh one and a little clear plexiglass one. It really helps keep the cabin pretty still and calm. Whereas I don't have much wind buffeting or anything like that right now. There's something about this car that's really alluring to me. Even though there's objectively some faults, it's relatively heavy. It's not the fastest thing in the world for this kind of money in a sports car form. Like a Jag F Type R for 100K is more powerful, faster. 
it has no storage space. The trunk is hilariously small, and you could say, well, it's a folding convertible top that eats into it. Even the coupe is tiny too. Tech, relatively outdated. Now this platform is, call it five, six years old, I think. So we do have wired CarPlay in Android Auto, which is very, very nice, because you plug it in and just forget about it. But the interface, that's not a touchscreen. I can't reach that from here. It's all behind this big piece of plastic. And you use the Lexus touchpad. It's like a laptop mouse pad thing, but it's my least favorite interface that I've experienced short of like Cadillac Q with the little swipey touch things. It is not easy to use. It's not enjoyable. So that is a downside. The screens aren't quite as fancy. The UI isn't as fancy, especially if you get out of like the latest Lexus UI touchscreen. It's actually pretty nice. And something like the, what did I drive recently? The RX 350. But there's Everything comes together and it's just so appealing. Every time I get in the car. Listen to that. Listen to that. Like this would be such a fun daily driver, even though it's rear wheel drive only, relatively expensive. <laughs> when you get over 4,000 RPM, it just opens up. And that noise is great. Don't bother with the 500H. That thing is like a hybrid V6 with a CVT. Forget that. Ultimately, Lexus is a Toyota, has great warranty, great maintenance, all that type of stuff. And because ultimately it's a Toyota, and I know how Toyota designs their vehicles, their reputation, their reliability, this thing will probably last 200,000 miles and be fine. If you try to drive a Mercedes S550 200,000 miles, you will probably spend another $100,000 keeping that thing running. I just want to keep doing that. Maybe that's why my fuel economy has been so bad. Chasing down a Mustang Mach 1. <laughs> I sound just as good as your 5 liter V8. So there we go. The Lexus LC500. Some thoughts. As you can tell, I do enjoy this vehicle quite a bit. Top down. I can put it right back up now. Because the Mustang in front of me is doing 17 miles an hour. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I missed to talk about. I will do a bit more in detail of the interior tour and exterior before we conclude this video, but I just wanted to take this for a drive and share some of my thoughts, sort of a, a mini review. All right, I'm gonna put the top down. Let's do an interior tour. You see red line is actually pretty low right now because the engine is cold. As it warms up, that red line will retract. So Jason picked up his own little convertible, but I've got my Japanese convertible. Hi, Jason. Hi. This has a five liter naturally aspirated V8. Uh, I keep saying V10, that's LFA. It's not a V10. Five liter naturally aspirated V8, listen. It's a little grumble. It's got a good little rumble to it, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Nice seats are comfortable. So these seats, I love this like quilting pattern on here. That's an air vent that blows hot air on your neck. In your neck, yeah. Yeah, that's very nice. Too warm. Seats are pretty comfortable. I love the red. The door, that panel, just the way like the door handle just floats in there. You get this waterfall of textured leather. You got multi tones. The darker right here, the lighter right here. It's got this little like textured checker pattern too, and I just think this is very nicely done. The buttons are. All pretty good quality. Infotainment center. Infotainment is... Pretty decent. It's okay. You have to use this trackpad thing, and it's just like going to climb it. And then it's just not the most friendly system. It's a little bit on the older side. I'm going to turn my heated seat up. There we go. I'm getting the hang of it, but it's not my favorite. It does have CarPlay. But... Yeah, the trackpads, I usually I struggle with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially it's... when you're driving. Exactly. Yeah. If it's on a laptop and I'm working on right. a laptop, it's fine. But I'm driving a car, so I don't like that. We have cup holder right here. A little cover on it. And then this actually slides front and back. Okay. Uh, that opens. And then, how do I... There we go. This, this goes front and back here. Yep. Glove box is there. Glove it's up. not very practical in terms of storage. Like, yeah. Like so does this, does this actually have a trunk? Yeah, it's not very big. Here, I'll pop it. You can go take a look at it. You'll laugh. You'll laugh. Go check out the trunk. It's hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's not bad though. It's not horrible. That's pretty bad. I feel like your Boxster is more practical. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Boxster is a front and rear trunk. This is a really cool textured pattern. It actually lights up at night. There's a little ambient lighting. Got the Lexus dash clock there. And then we have a CD player. That shows the age of the vehicle. We have a CD player. The Mark Levinson sound system is pretty good. Some actual climate toggles there, but like the heated seats and steering wheel, we have to go through the touchpad. Transmission selector will confuse some people. Left up is reverse, Ooh. left down is drive. 
straight down, put you in a manual, and the car hold rises for neutral. Go. I do feel it move a bit. It must it's be the way. Up. Yeah, it must be it's like. It's raised. It, well, I think it's it's not adaptive suspension. It must be when it like torques when it goes in the. I don't know. Science. That was a little awkward feeling. Yeah, the transmission is not the best in the world, but it's pretty good. So, what is the purpose of back seats in this vehicle? Because clearly there is zero room. Uh, it's for your backpack or a tripod. Uh, yeah, um, and insurance. Insurance. Right. Yeah, that's what I always think. It's gotta be <laughs> it's for gotta insurance. Gotta be for insurance. Dudes. Yeah, and then we have the toggles for the drive mode. Traction control, check out the center cluster. So when I do that, the entire ring moves like the LFA. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then, I should put it back in the middle because that's my favorite. And I toggle up into sport. The tachometer changes, then sport plus. It's like the LFA tachometer. The white and the red, that's pretty cool. Press the button, goes back to normal. Go down, there's a comfort. There's an eco. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That's nice. Yeah. It's a nice interior. It's a very nice place to be. Heads up display as well. Uh, uh, yes, I actually turned it off for the most of the drive. It was messing with my eyes, but it sits out there. You can see it. And then what else is there? Steering wheel's got the metal paddle shifters. It is heated. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. And that's the interior tour of the Lexus LC500 convertible featuring Jason. We also have carbon fiber door sills where this is glossy, matte carbon. And then if you look on the door, that's like forged carbon there on the actual door, which is not something I expected to see on a Lexus at all, actually. So that's actually pretty cool. I've got my Starbucks Nitro cold brew and about five and a half hours back to Chicago tonight. And we'll wrap up this week living with the Lexus LC 500 convertible. All right, just made it back home, did the entire five hour drive in one go without stopping. It just shows how good this car is at just consuming the miles. And I also know how much I like the LC500 because I spent probably the last hour of the drive imagining having one of these as my daily driver, thinking about what it would be like, how it compares to some of the other options I may consider. but. I know I really, really enjoyed driving this vehicle. It was just such a nice experience, a great week with the LC500 convertible. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and review. Thanks for watching.